Jaden Sancho was said to be one of the best upcoming superstars in football. His story to this point has been amazing as well, with him coming from a relatively violent area in South London, to then stepping out of his comfort zone and going to Borussia Dortmund, and then having Manchester United pay 85 million euros for his signature. However, since then, it's been downhill for Sancho, with him barely starting for the Red Devils, and also with him being left out of the World Cup squad for England. So, how did Jaden Sancho go from being the best English prodigy in recent memory, to him barely even getting on the pitch? Well, let's take a look at the rise and fall of Jaden Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho was born on March 25th, 2000 in the South London area of England. From a young age, Sancho was always in love with football, with him often watching the sport on TV and even watching clips of players he idolized, like Frank Lampard and Ronaldinho especially. Sancho also played football on the streets of South London with kids often much older than him, besides Reese Nelson, another footballer over at Arsenal right now who Jaden Sancho became best friends with when they were both kids. Now as I previously alluded to, South London wasn't the safest place for young kids like Sancho. Although Sancho was a good kid that stayed out of trouble and was also extremely focused on football, with him even saying that he knew football was his way out, he had friends who didn't think the same as him. In fact, Sancho was friends with a UK rap group called Harlem Spartans, and one of the friends in the group was violently stabbed to death a few years ago. Additionally, a few members of the Harlem Spartans are currently in prison as well, just showing how Sancho never had the best influence around him, despite him still being a very good kid. Then when Sancho was 7, a person named Holmes Lewis scouted Jaden Sancho out for Wofford, and this gave Sancho an opportunity to leave South London and go further north to truly focus on his footballing dreams, and also to stay out of trouble. Then, Jaden Sancho started balling out for the Watford U teams almost immediately. The coaches at the club saw how special of a player Sancho was, with him being very quick and skilled with a ball at his feet. Sancho was so impressive that when he was 11, Chelsea and Arsenal were after his signature to convince him to join their U teams instead. However, Jaden Sancho was committed to Watford and felt like staying at the club was the best option for him at that moment of time. Then, a few years later when Sancho was 14, he told one of the Watford coaches that he had a huge desire to play for one of the biggest European clubs in the world and how that would help him accomplish his dream of representing England. And that's when a little bit later, Sancho made the decision with his family to move to Manchester City in March 2015 for a fee of £66,000, a bargain for a boy that was so talented. Jaden Sancho was obsessed with being the best player he could be with the Man City youth team. More often than not, Sancho started to win the player of the tournament in every single youth competition he was a part of. Additionally, Sancho felt like he had a chip on his shoulder. While his youth teammates at City were hanging out with each other every weekend, doing fun stuff like partying, Sancho made the long trip to London every single chance he got to see his family, showing that he felt the responsibility for his family's well-being and how motivated he was to make it. In fact, two years after joining Man City in May 2017, the Man City chairman said that Jaden Sancho was impressing so much that he would be fast-tracked into the senior setup. And in City's preseason, he was starting to train with Pep Guardiola and the first team. This is where a problem arises, though, because City offered Jaden Sancho a professional contract. However, there were no assurances with how much playtime he was going to get with the main squad, which kept the contract talks going longer than normal. Then in July, Sancho was left out of City's preseason squad going to America due to the dispute over how much game time he was going to get. That's when Borussia Dortmund came in during the month of August and offered Man City 8 million pounds to take Sancho off their hands. With Dortmund providing more assurances with first team action, Sancho accepted BVB's proposal and was on his way to Germany to have his best chapter of his football career so far. But real quick before we talk about that though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. And also if you guys can, please follow my Twitter handle at Nabuto if you want to hear my thoughts on football games, transfers, etc. I also chat a lot of shit, so please hit me up with that follow, I would appreciate it. Anyways, back to the video. Jaden Sancho was surrounded by some experienced and young elite attackers that he could learn from, like Marco Royce, Mario Götze, and Christian Pulisic, someone Sancho has said publicly that he looked up to at his time at Dortmund. Dortmund initially brought Sancho in to be a replacement for Usman Dembele on one of the flanks, with Dortmund's idea being that Christian Pulisic could ball out on one side, while Sancho could ball out on the other. However, with Sancho battling injuries in the 17-18 season, that idea never came into fruition. However, in the next 18-19 season is when Sancho really started to show his talent to the world. Dortmund's idea of having Sancho and Pulisic together was screwed up again, with Pulisic battling battling many injuries during this season. That's when Sancho made the right wing position his own, with him getting 13 goals and 20 assists in 43 games, and basically his first ever professional season. With this, nobody could take Sancho out of that starting 11 for Dortmund, no matter how many talented attackers the club had. I mean, after all in that season, Sancho was breaking numerous records, like being the first player born in the 2000s to score twice in a single Bundesliga match, being the youngest ever player to score 10 goals in a Bundesliga season, and even becoming one of the youngest players to win the top assist provider of the season. Overall in that campaign, Sancho was showing that he could become a staple at Borussia 
Dorman for many years to come, and of course, a future star for England. Now, just when things couldn't get better for the 19-year-old Jadon Sancho, they did. Because in the 1920 season, he played even better for Dorman, with him getting a total of 20 goals and 20 assists in 44 games. Not only that, in the first game of the season in the DFL Super Cup against Bayern Munich, Sancho went on to score and assist in that game to beat the German Giants 2-0 and win Dortmund's first trophy of the season. All these impressive stats had Jadon Sancho named as the runner-up of the illustrious Golden Boy Award and even the runner-up in the Copa Trophy Award. Despite not winning either of these awards, Sancho was awarded with something even better during the January transfer window. Another superstar to help Sancho out with Borussia Dortmund. Obviously, I'm talking about Erling Holland joining BVB, where he and Sancho would form a deadly combination. And this deadly duo really started to show out in the 2021 campaign, where Sancho would get a total of 16 goals and 20 assists in 38 games, meaning this would be the third consecutive season that Sancho would bag 20 assists. Unbelievable for someone who's basically still a teenager. Anyways, Jadon Sancho and Holland would terrorize defenses not only in the Bundesliga, but also in the DFB Pokal Cup, where Sancho would get a goal contribution in every game in the competition, with him bagging a goal of 6 goals and 5 assists in the 6 games they played. Not only that, Borussia Dortmund came off as the winners of the DFB Pokal Cup in the 2021 season after destroying RB Leipzig 4-1 in the final, where Jadon Sancho and Erling Holland would get a brace each in this match, with both of them being the youngest goal scorers who scored a brace in the DFB Pokal Cup final. Anyways, these impressive performances would help Sancho accomplish one of his dreams, being called up to a major tournament for the England national team, with him making the 26-man squad for Euro 2020. The problem is, Sancho barely got to play in this tournament, with him only getting a total of 97 minutes at the competition. This is because the England manager, Gareth Southgate, preferred to start an out-of-form Raheem Sterling, an extremely young and raw Bukayo Saka, someone who wasn't as good as he is now, and a returning from injury Jack Grealish. It was no question that Jadon Sancho was the most informed England winger at the time, but Southgate and his Premier League bias thought otherwise. And with this bias, Southgate made Sancho face one of the worst moments of his career, subbing him on in the Euro 2020 final with one minute left of extra time to take a penalty kick, after barely playing in the Euros all summer. Without even having a warm-up, Sancho had the pressure of his country on him as he was set to take the fourth penalty in the shootout, where as we all know, he missed. This miss from Sancho and the entirety of the Euro 2020 tournament was the start of his fall in Sancho's young career. It didn't seem like that initially though, because in the same summer, many big English clubs wanted his signature, like Chelsea, Liverpool, and eventual winners Manchester United, who signed him for Borussia Dortmund for 85 million euros. Sancho really went from the blue side of Manchester to the red, without a second's doubt. He did not care at all of betraying his U team. He was ready to help the Red Devils as soon as possible. However, his first season didn't go to plan whatsoever, with him not playing a full 90 minutes for United all the way up until November, where he got the start against his old team Watford, and him only scoring his first goal for the club in the Premier League against Chelsea a week after that. In total for that 21-22 campaign for Sancho, he only managed to get a measly 5 goals and 3 assists in 38 games, massively underperforming in his first season for United. However, this wasn't entirely Sancho's fault though. During the summer transfer window, in order for United to salvage their respect as a club, with City getting close to signing their biggest ever legend, Cristiano Ronaldo, United had to move quick to sign their legend back to the club, which completely overshadowed Sancho's move to United and changed the entire game plan surrounding him. Plus, with United's managerial future falling into uncertainty, with the likes of Solskjaer and later Ragnar getting sacked, it just becomes hard for a player to adapt to these heavy managerial changes in his first season. So when Eric Ten Hag was appointed to be the long-term manager of United in the summer of 2022, it was expected that Sancho would play a big part in his plans. But we all thought wrong. That's because after the 22-23 campaign concluded, Jadon Sancho continued his terrible form, with him getting 7 goals and 3 assists in 41 games. Now initially in the season, things were looking bright for Sancho, with him bagging a goal against my beloved Liverpool to beat us 2-1, and then bagged an away goal against Leicester to win 1-0. However, despite these 2 goals in 2 months with United, a lot of England fans still expected to see Jadon Sancho on that World Cup squad in Qatar, since he was still a very important player for England's plans in the future. However, Southgate thought otherwise, and after playing a part in embarrassing him at the Euro final, he decided to leave him out of the World Cup squad, leaving him at home. It seemed like Sancho took this hard as well, with him at the time privating every post on Instagram and having a black screen profile picture after this news of him being left out became public. Then, while the players were at the World Cup, United were having a preseason and midseason to have players stay fit so when the Premier League resumes, they can be ready. However, Ten Hag left Sancho out of these plans, saying that it's better right now for Sancho to focus on his individual training program to try and bring his fitness and mentality back to where it needs to be. Clearly, things have been tough on Sancho, and he's trying to fix things up to go back to the level he was at with Dortmund. However, even with this, Sancho is still struggling with Manchester United, with him being more of a role player than a starter with United in the 23-24 season so far. And in my opinion, I don't think anything is going to change for Sancho. The truth is, there's no system at United that crucially needs Jadon Sancho to be in the plans. Ten Hag prefers his other wingers, like Rashford, Anthony, and even Garnacho ahead of him. Therefore, in my opinion, I think if Jadon Sancho wants to turn things around in his career, he has to leave United. United. He's still very young, with him only being 23 years old. That I bet European clubs are still willing to take a chance on him. But for me, I don't see a future where Jadon Sancho can be that guy for Manchester United.
United. Hence why he's gotta go. I'm wishing him the best though, and I hope he figures it out. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And also, if you guys could, please follow my Instagram and my Twitter. The links are in the description. And also, before you go, if you want to learn more about another superstar player, Neymar Jr., one of the best talents in this generation, you should definitely check out this video right here. You won't regret it.